Another kind of variable is temporary variable. And temporary variables exist and are used only by methods. Let's see them in practice. If you remember in the, in the previous tutorial, I created the hair color getter and setter methods for hair color instance variable. Now I'm going to do the same with the age variable. So I have here an age variable and I want to create a getter and a setter for it. Simple enough, click all, go here, use the name of the variable, which is age, and then, oh sorry that, that was not complete, age, and then use the upper arrow to return, uh, give back the value of the age instance variable, and accept. Now let's do that, the same for the setter. Again, click all, delete that, age. We use column. Remember that column goes together with the name of the method. It's very important because if you do this, you see immediately it's, uh, it's not no longer bold, which means it's no longer part of the name of the method. And of course, we don't want that because the column is part of the name of the method. And let's put here age dog age. This is going to take the value of the uh, of uh, of uh, that the, uh, that the edge method is going to receive, and we're going to use this value to assign it to the edge instant variable. So we say that edge, which is the instant variable, is dog edge, which is the parameter that is received by the method. You can. Uh, the period here is optional. You can use the period, but uh, because it's a last statement in the method, Faro knows already that it's a separate uh, command, so you don't have to terminate with a period. But if you want, you can add a period as well. So we have here the getter and the setter. Now, what will happen if we wanted for the object to return us the age of the dog, but in human years. We know that a dog, more or less, each year for a dog is around seven years for a human being. So a dog that is uh, 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 15 years old is, a lot, is around 105 years old as a human. So let's make a method that is able to do that. So what I'm going to do here is going to create a new method and call it age in human years. Now, as you can see, I use capital letters to differentiate each of uh, part of the name, so it mo it's more readable for the coder. I could have used only lower case, uh, lower cases uh, uh, letters if I wanted. So this is actually completely optional. The only thing that's mandatory is that you, you, should ha you should start your name with a lower case. So having I in capital and H in capital and Y in capital is completely optional, but it makes much more readable the name of my method. Now, if you see here, because of the template, we see something that is in, in double quotation. If you remember from early on, we said that single quotations create strings. Double quotation creates what's called a comment. A comment is not code, is not data. It's actually something that is completely ignored by Faro. It has no meaning for Faro. The meaning is truly only for us. It is actually a text that help that give us information about the method itself. So let's create a description of the method. Comments are completely optional, but it's good to use comments if you want to make your code more readable for others to read because it gives us information about methods and classes. So let's say here, this method returns the age of the dog in human years. Okay, now, how we create temporary variables? Well, we know that the, the age of the dog is uh, uh, the, the one year of a dog is seven years. I could use just seven directly in my calculation, but instead of that, I'm going to create a temporary variable that's going to say 
age difference, which, which is going to capture the fact that one year of a dog is seven years for a human. So let's create a temporary variable that's called age difference. Like instance variables that we've seen here in the class, we uh, divide each different variable uh, with spaces. But instead of using uh, single quotes as we did with instant variables, we use the uh, vertical uh, column sign for the start and the end of the definition of our local variables. So it's very important that you start and you end the definition of your local variables so that Pharos knows that those variables are local. The purpose of the local variable is going to be destroyed as soon as the method finishes and it's going to be created again as soon as the method is called. So let's do this. Now, we're going to say here that I'm going to return the value that comes with age of the dog multiplied by age difference. So what happens here is that it's going to multiply the age of the dog with the age of the difference and return that. But we first of all, we should define the difference. So what it's going to do now is going to replace age difference with 7. We need a period here, of course. You don't need a period here for the definition, and you don't need a period here for the comment, but you need a period here, and you don't need a period here because of the last statement. So is going to replace the age difference here with 7, which is the assignment, and the age is going to take any value that the age has. So let's accept that. And now let's see how this works. Let's go here and ask for the age of the dog. Let's say for body, Bobby, sorry, age. Return. Uh, print it. Print it. Now, observe something here which is very, very important. I, I don't have to really reinitialize the object. This is one of the beauties of Arrow. This is the essence of live coding. This instance here, when I created, when I signed it, didn't have the age method, which is a getter method. Didn't have it. I just created it. But because I accepted the method, when it compiled the method, it inserted here in this instance. So now the instance knows that, you know, oops, I have a new method called age. So it's, it's really great that if, if you were in another language, you will have to really create a new instance for Bobby. Because uh, you, won't, you won't be able to inject the new method in, in the existing in, instance. But in this case, we don't have to do that. We don't have to re-initialize the object. We don't have to redo this, this line again. We can use the object as it is and already has the edge method in here, inside here because of like coding, the method is immediately inserted in the instance. So we have now an edge which is 2. Now we know that it should be h2 uh, multiplied by 7 around, uh, uh, should be exactly 14 years uh, for a human. Age in, sorry, in human uh, years and let's print this and sure enough it's 14 years now let's do the same here with Lucy Lucy age in human years years okay and let's print this. It's 14. Nice. Now let's change the age. Bobby age is not 3, it's 5. Okay. Perfect. So do it. And then let's see the difference in human years. So now should be 35. Print it. And sure enough, it's 35. Now let's do the same with Lucy. We haven't changed the age of the Lucy. So again, in preach 14. Because it's 2 multiplied by 7, 
Remember that 2 is the default value that we have put in the initialize method, uh, so it's the default value that it starts with. And this is actually how local variables work and comments work. So as you can see here, I define the local variable, put it inside uh, columns, vertical columns, and then I assign the var uh, 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 value for it the same way I've done with instant variables, and uh, I uh, have used it to uh, return the difference, uh, the age in human years. One of the things that we should note here is that Unlike instance variables that you can access them with getter and setter methods outside the object, even though they are private, there is no way you can access uh, the, uh, the temporary methods, the temporary variables from, from inside the method. And that's all for temporary uh, variables. Sorry about that. Temporary variables. Uh, see you in the next tutorial.